Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over the Thule Hitching Post Pro 4 bike rack here on our 2021 Ford F-150. So the Thule Hitching Post is what's known as a hanging style bike rack. Now there's really two main types. We have the platform style, which you set the bike on and it holds it by the bottom of the wheels there. And we have the hanging style, which holds it by the horizontal top tube. Now both of these bike racks are great options. Some of them are a little bit better for certain bikes than others. The platform style, however, are usually good for those heavier bikes such as the e-bikes because the hanging style simply can't accommodate the weight of those. However, where the platform bike rack exceeds, the hanging bike rack exceeds by being much lighter weight. A lot of those platform bike racks are very cumbersome, they're heavy, so they're hard to get on and off the vehicle, whereas the hanging style bike racks are usually pretty lightweight, therefore easy to get off the vehicle. Another sort of comparison is with the platform style bike racks, it's typically a little bit easier to set your bikes on, whereas with the hanging style bike racks, it's a little bit harder because you have to lift the bikes up a little bit more. But as we're restricted to 35 pounds for this particular rack here, it shouldn't be too much work because we really can't use heavy bikes on this. So the best rack for you is really going to come down to what type of bikes you have. If you have some lighter road bikes like what we have here, the Thule Hitching Post Pro is going to be an excellent option for that. So the hitching post has three points of contact. We mentioned the two on the top earlier, attached to the horizontal top tube. And we also have one down here at the bottom on that seat post. Now what this bottom one does is, this is actually an anti-sway cradle, and this is gonna help prevent the bike from moving as much side to side when we're out driving on the road. Therefore, reducing the chance that it can swing and hit our vehicle, and also reducing the chance of the bikes clinging into one another and damaging them that way. So once we've arrived at the trails, we're ready to get some riding in. It's very easy to remove the bike. First of all, we're gonna pull down on our straps here. So if we actually take a look at these, these are made of a very heavy duty rubber. They're very durable. I don't see them breaking. Some of the other bike racks on the market, they have sort of these flimsy straps, which with increased use, they can actually break over time. This one has seen quite a bit of use and you can see it's held up very well due to the durability of the strap. We also have multiple holes in that strap to accommodate different bike shapes and frames. So once we remove that top one, pull down, remove that one. Now we have one more on the side and then we can actually just lift our bike up and off the rack. So now that we have our bike off, we can take a closer look at the cradles. As you can see here, we have several of these little channels and slots. And what these are for is, these are designed for bikes that have the cables, the brake cables ran on the underside of the frame. Therefore, they can sit in that pocket there and they're not gonna scratch up the frame on our bike. Now, in regards to the construction, they're sort of like a mix between a hard plastic and a rubber. Therefore, they're gonna do a great job of securing the bike frame and also reducing the vibrations from the road from being transferred to our bike. So now we got a couple measurements for you guys here. The first one we're gonna measure from the back of the tailgate to the outwardmost edge of the arms on our bike rack, just to give us an idea of how much length we're adding to our vehicle with the arms extended. And this is gonna be right at 39 and a half inches. And then another one I like to give is just our ground clearance. So the distance from the ground to the bottom of the shank. And this one we're gonna call about 18 inches. So a great feature that this bike rack has, and I'm sure you guys are gonna like, is that we have a folding arm design. Now, what this means is, let's say we get done trail riding for a day, we come home late at night, we don't wanna leave our bikes on the rack overnight, but we don't necessarily wanna mess with getting the bike rack off. However, we have a garage, and we can't necessarily fit our vehicle in the garage with the arms of the bike rack extended. Well, as you can see here, we can actually fold those down for a nice compact storage, allowing us to keep our bike rack on the vehicle without having to remove it, and we can still fit in our garage. And if you wanna be absolutely certain that you can fit in your garage, you can use this measurement here to assist. Again, the distance from the tailgate to the outside edge is gonna be about 20 inches. So with the arms folded, we're significantly reducing the overall length of our vehicle, giving us a much greater chance of fitting into our parking space. Another feature of this rack here, Let's say we have some items in our truck bed that we need to get out, but as you can see here, if I go to open the tailgate here with the rack still installed, it's gonna hit the rack and it's gonna damage our tailgate, which is obviously not good. However, we don't wanna to have to take the bike rack off each time when we do this either. Luckily, we have a great feature sort of built into the rack. If we pull that pin out, release the clip, and we let this tilt down, as you can see here, 
we can actually lower our tailgate. And we can lower it all the way down without having to worry about any clearance issues. We have a couple inches before we reach the bike rack, so no worries at all there. Now we can get everything we need in and out of the truck bed without removing our bike rack. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is gonna show us the side to side action. This simulates turning corners or evasively maneuvering. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Once we get to the full speed bumps, we'll see the up and down action. This will be just like driving in and out of a parking lot, parking garage, or driveway. So in summary, the Hitching Post Pro is gonna be an excellent bike rack option for you and the family as we can hold up to four bikes. Now, this is actually one of our best-selling bike racks at e-trailer. It holds the Thule name and it offers all those great features that Thule offers on some of their other bike racks without the added price tag. We still have those great built-in anti-rattle features, the anti-sway features. There is one thing it doesn't have that you may want to consider is adding locks in which case we can actually purchase an anti-rattle locking hitch pin for this rack. That's gonna secure the rack to the vehicle and we could purchase some cable locks to secure our bikes to the rack. But aside from that, this is a really great option, one of my personal favorite bike racks. And that's gonna do it today for our look at the Thule Hitching Post Pro 4 bike rack here on our 2021 Ford F-150.